Hello and welcome to this week's instalment on the Toylander 1 build series. Um, last week was episode 2 and this is on to episode 3. I had a bit of a chat to you about the tools I bought last week and how I was going to be working. So here you can see a bit of work in progress. Um, I bought two sheets of marine ply, 8 foot by 4 feet, 45 pound each, as you'll see in the last episode. And I've actually used up one of the sheets already. And this is my second one. And there's no prizes for guessing what shape this is. Now, Toylander 1, in case you're only joining us, um, this is what I am hoping to build here. And um, this is for my wee son, who's currently one. Um, but by the time I'm finished, I'm sure you'll be closer to two. Um, it will not be the sage green. I'm probably going to paint it cream, but that is hoping to be the finished product in here. I have the MG and out of the way. Our rain hit. It's been pretty bad here the last couple of days, so that's why the MG is in. I do push it out whenever I'm working because the sawdust goes everywhere. So this is the second sheet. Um, I'll take you around here and show you some of the panels. I cut from the first sheet. They're all neatly stored here out of the way. Particularly pleased with this. Um, now, annoyingly this is how the plywood goes. It seems to chip um, along the edges. I suppose that's the way the ply is made. Um, and that's something I'll have to address with wood filler, but that is the radiator grill. And I think that looks brilliant. I'm really pleased with that. It took ages to cut it out and get the curves all produced with the jigsaw, which is what I'm using, and I filed it all to make it look quite presentable. So once it's painted and filled, I think it'll look really good. See how it's all peeled there on the back, so that'll definitely be the back. You will notice that there are no holes cut on that for the headlamps. Um, those holes will get cut um, whenever I find suitable headlamps. I'll not be buying the ones from Toyland themselves. Um, I hope to buy my own slightly cheaper. Other panels. This is going to be the dashboard, which I think has turned out very well as well. Um, I had planned, if you look back in episode one of this, I had mentioned that I would be getting a, a joiner to give me a hand with some specialised tools. That has not been the case. I've just decided to move on by myself with just a jigsaw. So quite pleased to how this is turning out. Um, there's a side panel. Hopefully you can appreciate that. This is the front, and it's got the curve of the arch, or curve of the front of the wing, the wheel arch, down the bottom of the doors, second wheel arch, coming round the back. Um, and then I will hopefully router in lines for where the doors are, and round off this edge as well with the router. I'm going to need to get some help arranged for that. These are the two inner wings cut. Um, and various other panels that are just hidden well out of the way. This one's the bulkhead. I'll take you around and show you some others. Excuse the turn and throw. Um, that is my jigsaw. I showed you all that last week. Um, amazing actually how quickly you go through the blades and I'll show you the two different types of blade I have. I didn't realise there were two different types. Turns out there's lots of different types um, depending on the material and what you're doing with it. So these, as you can see, I have marked out on the other side, um, are the inner top of the wings of the rear. So there's two of those. Move those out of the way. These are the underneath for the motors. Their feet will come through here. And there's two of those. And then under here, this is the kick panels that sits behind the feet. Um, that long slots where the handbrake comes out. And these two holes are for ventilation. And then this sheet here is for a filler in behind that. And then the last one, this was tricky to mark out. Bear with me. This is a rear cross member, believe it or not. Um, that holds where the PTO shaft would come out. Yes, I know it's not all that round, but I'll file it out nice and round. And the curve, as you can see. So that still needs to be cut out. Um, started there. This needs to be finished off. Um, I do have to be careful, as I mentioned last time, about what time I'm working at, because my wee son is asleep above me, so I, I can't really use the power tools, because it'll wake him up and I'll get in trouble, but I can use hand tools. Um, so those are all cut out, ready to go. After that, that is actually all the bodywork cut out, believe it or not. Um, I just have the rear panel to do. Um, 
so I'll have to mark that out and cut it. Interestingly, Toylander themselves say you will need two, probably three sheets of 8x4 marine ply. And as you can see, I have quite a lot left, which is good, because um, I might build the matching trailer. But let's get the Toylander itself finished first. So yes, I do have lots of excess material, but it means there's plenty of room to make mistakes. Come over here. These are the blades I've been using. Um, I just want to show you the comparison between the two. Um, these are for ply. Um, the thick one I've been using to cut straight lines and the narrow one for... I'll go back into focus. For bends. The main reason being that the narrow blade will easily navigate around the bend without causing a twist in the blade and then it catching and jumping. So, as you can see, these are all my blunt ones. There's still a few, plenty more to do me. Um, I have been using these carpenter pencils, but to be honest, I find a normal HB just as good. Um, something else I made, if I can find it, this very important piece, little piece of wood. So, I um, can't remember the top number off the top of my head, I think it's 223mm is the radius for the wheel arches. Now, I only have a small mathematics compass, something like you would have used in school. So what I did was I made this, which is just a scrap piece of wood. I measured the two holes accurately and drilled them out big enough to put a screw through one end, put my pencil the other, and get your perfect radius, which I think works really well. I did cheat a bit in that I only measured one of the body sides, I mean, it was absolute, made sure it was absolutely right, and then used it as a template to cut the other, so the two would be absolutely identical. Um, I hope that works out quite well, but I'm pretty sure it would, I can't see why not. Um, some spare bits and bobs. I'll hold on to it in the meantime, I'm in no rush, but as you can see, the sawdust makes quite the mess of my garage, which gets me in trouble because it is an integral garage and the dust goes everywhere through the house. So, these are the tools I'm using, talked about that last time. If you to check that video out. Um, the MG is in, more about that soon, I'm finding more rust on it, so I think this is going to require quite a bit of extra work, but another video coming about that very soon. So hope you enjoyed that update on the toy lander. Had a couple of days off this week and got some work done. Um, I'm sure you'll agree it's kind of really pretty cool wee project. I think it's going to look really well when it's finished. And I hope my wee son enjoys it too. And I hope to paint it cream just to match my own lander and I think it'll look really smart. And it'll also be a bit kinder on the eye with any bodywork imperfections. As I'm told, the lighter colours are easier to work with. So there you go. Toy lander. One build series episode three hope you enjoyed that please hit the subscribe button like and comment i do reply to all my comments and if you have any constructive criticism i'm happy to hear it um catch you again next week thanks for watching